Pippin, well, what's interesting, this this follows in. Of course, Pippin kind of goes and gets yeah. it. He's sort of impulsive. He's a little bit yeah. foolish and impulsive, and he just goes and gets it. Which, uh, you know, the little things consistently throughout a story that build, you know, the picture of a, a complete character. Like, yeah. they're, remember, they're kind of little things that you would overlook. Yeah, remember this element of Pippin. It, w it will literally become a part of, you know, his character later again. There, yep. You see that? That look of like, of course you would fuck around with this. And then Pippin's like, hmm. Hail the victorious dead! Hail! This is our we can chill out for a little bit moment, because the two towers was tough, okay? Yep, <laughs> we did just get off of like, oh, you gotta assemble everyone, he's coming, we gotta do some stuff in the Palantir, that's spooky. So we kinda, kinda get our little bitty balance, our little ups and downs of tension Which, and release. No spirits. And no regurgitation. <laughs> so, it's a drinking game. Balance in a four-hour movie, that's a tough thing to it is tough. achieve. Yeah, you the only other that's example we have is uh, Zack Snyder doing yes, it horrendously the awful. Perhaps the most, no, what are you saying? Perhaps the most well-balanced film ever made. <laughs> not a not a second wasted, not a frame wasted in that, that movie. That was one of the most fascinating experiences to compare the footage differences <laughs> in the, the Whedon yeah. cut versus his own and how much he added into scenes that were just you know, establishing shots. We needed to know they walked up all of those stairs, or else how would we have known how they got to the top of the stairs when and they we were really at the needed bottom? To see, we needed to see that extra 25% of empty space above all of the characters' heads in no. every scene except for the one that <laughs> yes. was reshot. Yes. yes. It was not Thaden of Rohan who led our people to victory. Ahsoka had to show us getting on a ship. That's true. Ship, Ahsoka's a great example of wasting time. Staring at each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And ironically, the prequels to these movies, technically, the Hobbit movies, are the most time wasty trilogy ever put to film. Yeah. What did I say? Depends on your definition of time wasting. <laughs> One might say the sequels would be the biggest waste of time for anybody ever. A tree in a courtyard of stone. It was dead. So this would be interpretable as he did actually see into Sauron's plan or that Sauron was happy for him to see this as like a threat or maybe a instill a bit of fear. I think that I there's think a little bit of fight. openness to the communication that kind of leaves it a little bit. Yeah, it's hard to know because when Saruman was using it, he was obviously more adept at it. He wasn't even yeah. touching it when he used it. His hand was over the top of it and he was doing his spooky wizard fingers, you know, stuff. And this is far more uncontrolled and a bit wild. There was no lie in Pippin's eyes. A fool, but an honest fool, he remains. Gee, thanks. Well, I don't know, he's getting off lightly compared. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pippin saw in the Palantir a glimpse of the enemy's plan. Look at those god rays. Why should we ride to the aid of those who did not come to ours? No, Theoden. It's okay. They were just... Shitty. You must come to Minas Tirith by another road. You're gonna fetch us some Skeleman ghosts. Well, yeah, he'll be doing that and the Corsairs, right? Of all the inquisitive hobbits Peregrine took, you are the worst. Hurry, hurry! It is interesting to think about, like, how to, you know, now that the Fellowship's been split apart, how do we make sure that everybody's got enough to do for yeah. long enough to give us a lot of balance and scope for the story? Yeah, you compared want... Compared to how much more focused the scope of Fellowship is. You want character and agency. With a lot of them. Yeah, and figuring out like the right pairings and how to make those pairings interesting as well. Like Gandalf and Pippin, it's an interesting, interesting combo. Yeah, and then Merry and Eowyn, right? Like connecting over there. Um, yeah. Both not and being it taken feel, seriously. You know, now we know. Sauron thinks that Pippin has the ring. Merry had to tell him this to kind of snap him into like, no, this is what's happening. You need to be like, take this seriously. And it doesn't feel yeah. forced. It doesn't feel like it's just expository dialogue. Yeah. Something for the road. Last of the long bottom leaf. You smoke too much. And he's telling him because he cares about him. Yep. Yeah, well, this realization, they might not see each other again. We'll see each other soon. Because, yeah, they're, they've almost had it a little too chill for too long, those two. Yep. Well, these yep. two are now getting thrust very quickly. It's like, all right, time oh, they're for separated. your arms. They're not together anymore. Yeah. They're, for the first what time. What a great way to force that growth when they're both apart. First time ever for them. Sauron has yet to reveal his deadliest servant. The one who will lead Mordor's armies in war. 
That's a point of contention, it's... right? Saying that we he's yet to reveal the Witch King, even though we've met the Witch King already. I guess the, reveal. Uh, it wasn't yeah, the revealed best, in like um, the field of battle. It was a secret yeah. kind of. I, I guess you that. could also argue like he hasn't really gone like full Witch King. I guess. Yeah. I would word it differently. Yeah, because the line. Yeah, the line. Script. He's yet to reveal him. You've met him before. Like, I okay. guess because it was a. It was yeah a more covert weather top kind of thing. Yep. Instead of like here he is. Look, he's flying around on his on his spooky serpent, and he's it, yeah. maybe it would be better to say something along the lines of like he's yet to reveal his full power or something, yeah. which is true in the context of the movies. It's just that line is kind of clunky. I'm not the first halfling to have crossed your path. You've seen Frodo and Sam. Oh, the fucking the hope with Gandalf at this point. Not two days ago, Gandalf. And then describing where they're heading. They're taking the road to the Mobile Bale. Then the pass of Kirithongal. Kirithongal, where Sam kills canonically like a thousand orcs. Tolkien had to depower Sam a little bit. <laughs> it's a nerf like, him. You sent the ring of power into Mordor in the hands of a witless halfling. I probably wouldn't have mentioned that. <laughs> I'd have been like, eh, uh, I didn't come across any ring. What do you mean? It should have been brought back to the citadel to be kept safe, not to be used. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you say so. Yeah, buddy. if you say so. It would have been fun to tell see you, the... Let me tell you what they said happened to Boromir. Boromir would have remembered his father's need. Boromir would not have brought the ring. It would have been funny to see the Denethor vision of Gollum. <laughs> I guess he rapidly, like, deteriorates. <laughs> no, no, he's already ugly enough. I don't need to see a Gollum version of Denethor. He would have stretched out his hand to this thing, and taking it, he would have fallen. You know nothing of this matter. He would have kept it for his own. Man. Sam telling him that really got to him, huh? About what happened with Boromir, I mean. Boromir was loyal to me! Not some wizard pupil! Not a wasted performance, though, huh? No, there's so many micro-expressions there. No, oh, I'd imagine looking down. <laughs> Here's the thing, don't. <laughs> the fact that the army is still coming out as yeah, well. Uh, it's yeah, it's always imagine... a great detail. There's so many orcs. Imagine making that stairway. Chiseling yeah. at it every day. Yeah. It makes you wonder, like, what kind of a city is it? Well, they're packed in there like a clown car. Jesus Christ. It was just a really big they building. Have... the wizard. I will break him. No. Where Rohan's army come. Just the sound of all of the footsteps in the background, giving such a sense of the scale of this army. Something I didn't know until recently, it was apparently uh, Peter Jackson was not too <laughs> fond of the army of the ghosts, the army of the dead. Like as a plot element? Yeah, and that he, he ended up deciding to include them because he didn't want to remove something that significant from the books for the sake of the fans. I mean, the thing about them, they are, they present issues for me. Like, it's one of the first things I go to for Lord of the Rings flaws is just the, the army of the dead are so fucking overpowered, it's insane. There, a true esquire of Rohan. <laughs> it's weird that he uh, didn't like them for that, but there's significantly less of them in the book than there is in the movie. Oh, I'm not going to say, I don't know what his reasons were specifically. Oh, I'm just saying my reasons. <laughs> like, I, I, I think they're badass as hell. It's just that it's just difficult and the, you need to restrict them more and nerf them more, I think. Well, yeah, because the wave of the, the ghost army washing over the battlefield, right? It's like, wow. You should not encourage him. Why should Merry be left behind? He has as much cause to go to war as you. I'm trying to think of if the curse could somehow... You can contrive it, kind of, so that they cannot... They can only fight in defense, they can't fight in offense. Mm. Something like that. Wait, now we have 6,001 spears. Arwen is dying. I mean, yeah, you, you do wonder if they had that conversation. Like, are you going to join us? And he was like, no. As Sauron's power grows, her strength wanes. Is it abstractly saying, like, Sauron's power is drawing life away from I her, like a magical way? It's not abstract, but it's like, uh, like the elves have some sort of a life force that sustains them. That's sort of like a good versus evil kind of thing. They don't get too specific specific well, about I, what I it mean, is? Well, I mean, no offense, right? I'm waiting for Gary and Wolf to explain it more so. <laughs> I think that's more of a movie invention. Cause I like, thought so, invention. yeah. Because yeah. I remember that, talking about it before. That's really in the book. In the yeah, movie, they do a decent amount, sort it, of setting it, it up, this element of, like, the elves are leaving, things are changing. You need more men. There are those who dwell in the mountain. Well, even well, the concept of they call it like the light of the even star. I think in the book, they literally just call Arwen like Arwen even star, like a nickname. Yes. Like there's not really anything significant about the name even star at all yeah. in the book. Now it's, explain what they did in Rings of Power. Well, they, uh, concept, they read they the book. <laughs> This is just something that we as modern people can't appreciate. You'll we'll never know the feeling of crunching over 
a floor made of human skulls. Uh, not with that attitude. That's right. Believe to achieve. Mm-hmm. Don't let your dreams be mean. To the paths of the dead. Well, nothing to worry about then. This is well, they just... at all. This is incredibly inviting. Yeah, this is like... This is where I just turn around and leave. Yeah, but that's because you're not as brave as these three lads. Well, if I was with them, if I was in the company of yeah. Gimli, Legolas, and Aragorn, yeah, we're going in. But I would go anywhere if I was with these three. Well, I would go in there if I had a gun to my head the entire time so I could kill myself before the <laughs> ghost gets me. I do not fear death. <laughs> Gimli just be like, well, I, I do. An elf will go underground. When a dwarf, still not. Oh, I'd never hear the end of it. <laughs> I'd never hear the end of it. <laughs> the, 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 the only reason he's going is the shame. <laughs> yeah. Shame works. hear the end of it. Shame works. Unless you're buggy. <laughs> okay. Most of the time. We don't talk about anomalous Lovecraftian creatures, okay? I fucking always remembered this visual. <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> That's not yeah, that's beautiful. Not good. And then, to, and then to say Rohan kind of like, deserted us. What a fucking prick. I, I love how the music there is just kind of like emblematic of him going insane looking at this shit. Burdens betrayed me. Shut up. Abandon your post! I feel like everyone is like, for real? What? Wait, really? What? What? Oh, we have nowhere to that? fucking oh. go. Also, this might be one of the greatest blueprints ever for filmmakers to understand the highs and lows to create drama. We In keep balancing from feeling like we're going to lose to feeling like, oh, we were going to win. And then we're back to feeling like, oh, fuck, maybe not. And then... The really important part being that there's justification for those peaks yes. and dips. Dude, yeah, this, this mean, shot oh, lives oh, in my head rent free as well. The, Just oh, getting all of fuck. the reactions and then, oh, there they are. And the orcs Holy running shit. to them like, save us. And <laughs> even then, Thayden immediately is like, all right, reform the yep. line. All right, yeah. All right, yep, let, yep, we can still win this, guys. Come on, because you need- they need There is, there is no time. other option. The there eyes. is no we give up. Yeah. There's like, we keep fighting no you matter what. You need to believe that they can win. Reform the line! Reform the line! One of the strongest examples of undercutting. Just, yeah, let's go. And the music ramping up again to go, yeah, mm -hmm. look at him go. They're going to charge it. They're going to win. Shot, yep. As and soon then, as the music cuts. Yep, just Whee! hard cut. Look at him. They're getting absolutely annihilated. I don't know what it is, but it's just Notice incredibly that sword effective through the air. so many times when you just hard cut to the diegetic sounds of the battle. It also helps that we get so many shots from down on the ground with all the Rohirrim. Absolutely. Yeah. So you get a sense of scale for just how fucking massive these things are. We need to make sure that we have our perspective on the ground so that we understand just how chaotic and scary this situation is. <laughs> Yeah! Here we go. Do it! <laughs> Aomir trying to be Legolas. And succeeding. Oh, oh, God. God. Standing up to a fucking elephant like that, yeah. That still only counts as one. Kilimanjaro, Killionaire. Running right. Oh, I guess he wasn't running. Oh, but... friggin' believable. <laughs> I mean, though it felt like it was almost hopeless, but now we're seeing a, a lot of different methods to take yep. down the Muma kill. Yeah. I love how vicious that throw was. Yeah. Well, it's, it's just obvious the Witch King is to take out this guy. He's fucking too good. <laughs> Do not come between the Nazgul and his prey. Spend as much of the film as they have to build up the Witch King and then to have her be the one to fight him. <laughs> Oh, the way he gets up and the wings mm -hmm. still, <laughs> ah, so still, cool. still convulsing a bit. Oh. Release us. You gave us your word. Yeah, that feels like a slight acknowledgement of like, set him to Mordor? And you're like, no, we can't do that. <laughs> also, they probably wouldn't do it. They'd probably be like, you fucking lied to us. Well, that's, that's what I'm saying, is that that's why yeah. that's there mechanically, but this like, is, all Aragorn has off, to you know? do is, yeah. when he makes that oath, say, with us... The, f the war against Mordor, and then I'll free you. And if they'd agreed, you know. Yeah. Oh, this is such wow. a like, are you fucking kidding me? Seriously. Are you serious? This little gremlin is back. <laughs> And, uh, the palpable sense of desperation in this yeah. moment. Yeah, you know, you're, you're making progress in a sense, but... Oh, not these bastards again. 
Wow! Oh, no, does that mean he's going to turn into a golem? I don't think it can be spread by bite. <laughs> Those are the golem rules, right? <laughs> you don't think, but you don't know. Yeah, the amount they had going on faith, too, right? They had they had nothing really concrete to know nothing what was happening. Faith. Fuck you, fire demon. That's right, blow up! Go on, do it! Do it, do the shockwave! Do oh, it! Looks so cool! <laughs> Yeah! Oh, oh, oh. This oh, might be the most it. satisfying villain death in history. Well, it's very much tied to the whole movie that came before it, and I mean all of them, really. Yeah. <laughs> That's quite the bad guy to be. It, it's like the first, one of the only instances where you see a villain who doesn't really directly do anything himself, but he just has like this incredibly satisfying demise. Kind of vaporizes, just like, uh, just like Emperor Palpatine, which means he might just return. No, no, no. Then, no. It's, until you yeah, dare even go down that fucking train of thought. The elation immediately undercut of yeah. Oh, like, I mean, shit. from from this vantage point, no way they're making it out of that. Like we didn't think the mountain would blow up when we did. God, this. it's so important that we get each of the reactions. Oh, you know, look at him running! Oh, go, go! That yeah, lava, so dude. That's hot. some fucking <laughs> Jesus Christ! That tension would be so right hot. there. I love how much it does to convey just how hot this is, even if it's you know not real and not there just their faces and you know that wind is just like a furnace like has any character from any marvel movie looked anywhere near as fucked up as these two look right here uh tony looked pretty i mean yeah tony, tony after, yeah, after he yeah, fucking yeah, did tony the looked pretty bad can we talk about how this is a fucking amazing moment <laughs> yes we yeah, can this is yeah we, need to, we need to hold off on the george hate for a second you bow to no one this moment's amazing oh, moment. because it spotlights that even the smallest and most useless pathetic pieces of shit in the world are important. That's true. Who are you referring to? You. <laughs> oh, damn. I'm glad that I'm important, Molly. Thank you. Yeah. The tallest, no the tallest one. man in the world. And then the camera sweeping in to make sure that's the case it's just perfection. it's beautiful is what it is that is it really is it's wonderful between the four of them their achievements are insane